Hey, this is Pastor Dennis. I just want to spend a few moments to encourage you. Um, even though tonight we're not able to have our regular services here at Grandview, uh, I just want to be able to just encourage you in the Word and to spend a few moments um, just coming into your home um, or on your phone or whatever this device might be, just to be able to encourage you to keep doing what we know we should be doing uh, during this day and this hour. I just want to share with you uh, Psalm 46. Psalm chapter 46, uh, verses 10 and 11, and you might want to write that down and meditate on these verses and, and just see what God would stir in your heart, because we have a lot of time on our hands right now. Many of us are spending more time at home, and sometimes that is isolated time. Um, and I want you to see this as an opportunity um, to invest in your spirituality, um, to take this self-discipline here, to be um, proactive in this time, that we're redeeming the time, doing the best here. So I just want to talk with you for a few moments of the best use of your time in downtime, um, so that you're not just spending a lot of time watching TV or just reading books, um, but that we are investing in ourselves spiritually, personally, so that we're coming out of this um, even stronger than when we went in. So Psalm 46, verse 10 and 11, uh, the psalmist says, Be still and know, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts uh, is with us. The God of Jacob is our strength, our refuge, our high tower. Selah, stop and think about this. So the scripture just is telling us is to take the time to be still. Take the time to acknowledge that he is God. Take the time to acknowledge that he is still the Almighty in our life. And it's what we have to do personally, individually. So we might feel isolated at this time, but let's see this as a spiritual renewal time where we can pull away from some of the distractions and maybe some of the demands that are normally on our life and to be able to focus on what God tells us to do, to focus on his presence, to focus on his word. And there's so many distractions normally that we're facing. And even now that there's the distractions and the fears of the world around us, um, but we have some free time on our hands to be able to isolate ourselves with the Word of God in the presence of God to transform and to change us. So what are we going to do? I know that even though we can't meet on a regular basis, our children's ministry is taking the time to encourage the students to memorize Psalm 91, to put it into their heart. And we're doing that at our home with our grandkids, helping them to memorize the Word of God to the best of their ability, to see the value of it. Not out of fear, but in preparation for life and how God wants to use us. So how do we make the best use of our downtime? Well, most people would jump to prayer. And the prayer is important, that is in, that's for sure. But if we don't focus on God, to be still and know Him, know that He is God, if we don't take the time to really focus on His presence, even our prayers can become selfish. Even our prayers can become unbiblical at times because it's about my family, my feelings, my future, instead of focusing on what God wants to accomplish and to do. I mean, even Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, and if you're going to pray, first of all, start to acknowledge who God is. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Start to exalt who he was, to start to magnify his presence in our life. And then start to declare, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't it interesting that even in those few verses there that Jesus it says, before you start to pray about your needs, start to acknowledge and know who God is and what he wants to do here on this earth. So I want to encourage you, as your pastor, first of all, to take the time daily to spend time in God's word. Meditate that word. Don't just read a few verses and then quickly rush off, or even just your chapter of the day. But spend time reading the word of God and then meditating on what you've read. The word meditate means to mutter or to contemplate, to stop and think about what you've read, to really put it into our hearts, the word that we've just comprehended or just read in our lives. You remember the scripture tells us in Joshua chapter 1 when Joshua was about to go in and face some incredible opposition, to face some incredible uh, uh, battles that were going to be ahead of him. And yet the word of the Lord says in Joshua chapter 1 verses 8 and 9, he says, study this book of the instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. 
meditating on the word day and night, that you will be sure to obey everything that is written in it. Only then will you prosper and be successful in all that you do. This is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 are just as true for us as it was for Joshua. We have to be doers of the word before we can be blessed by the benefits of the word in our life. So I want to encourage you in this downtime to spend time meditating on the word. Spend time listening to the voice of God in your life. Remember, the Bible is God speaking to us. And as we spend that time allowing God to speak to us, then we can be doers of that word. And when we do so, then we can come out of those moments courageous and strong and ready to face whatever is ahead of us with the courage of God's promises and word for our life. So spending time daily in God's word. The second thing I want to encourage you on today uh, as we uh, make the best use of our downtime is I want to encourage you to find reasons to worship God. Find reasons. Discover them. Make it come alive on the inside of you. And it's got to be more than just singing a song even one of your favorite songs, but discovering reasons to worship the Lord. There's so much worry in the world right now, so much panic, so much fear, but I want you to know God has not changed. He's still the Almighty One. He's still the hope and the Savior. He's still the healer. He's still the one that can work miracles in our life today. And we go back to Psalm 100. Now, oftentimes it's thought of as a psalm of thanksgiving, and it certainly is. But it also is a psalm that reminds us of reasons why to worship him. We discover that he is worthy of worship, not because of just something new that's happened, not be just because of something that didn't happen bad in your life, but because he is God. That's the reason that we constantly discover. To worship him daily is because he never changes. Psalm 100 says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. And it goes back to the original verse we talked about. Be still and know that he is God. Here he says in verse 3, acknowledge that he is, is the Lord, is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, for he is good. Excuse me, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. I want you to know that God's faithfulness is for this generation. And that he's a God that loves us here today, right now. He loves you right where you're at. That's reason to worship. And I just want to encourage you that you are taking the time daily, right now, fill this extra time that you have with time in the Word of God, meditating on it, not just reading it. And then we're taking time to worship Him because He is God. We're not looking for always something new, but we're rediscovering the fact that He is the reason that I worship Him. I think it's interesting in the New Testament, especially in the letters that are written to the church, now we're told to give a sacrifice of praise to God. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Therefore let us continually, that's daily, that's regardless of what's going on in our life, regardless of whether it's good or bad, whether it's a crisis that is hitting just our family or something that is hitting this world, that we continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, confessing or giving thanks to his name. So, in your life, are you giving thanks to Him? I just want to encourage you that you're spending more time in God's presence than focusing on the crisis. That we are spending t more time worshiping God because of who He is than worried about what could happen in our life. That we're spending more time in this downtime, investing in our spirituality than just making it through until we can get out and do what we want to do. As your pastor, I want to encourage you to be that flock that is fully uh, protected by God's presence, but also that you're intentionally feeding on God's word and spending time in his presence, because that's what's going to transform and change you. And we at Grandview, staff and leadership, we're here 
praying for you. We're here calling you, but we're encouraging you to do what you need to do also. And that is spend time in God's word and spend time worshiping him because he still is God in your life. And when we get through this, we'll come as the people of God with testimonies of his faithfulness and fresh revelation of what God has spoken to our hearts. God bless you. We love you. Looking forward to spending time with you Sunday morning, 1030. We'll come with that live broadcast to be able to speak into your life again. Be praying one for another and reaching out and demonstrating the love of God during this time. And remember, the Lord's work is still to be done, and you're the one to be doing it. God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday morning.